Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about blade components and blade slots. And it will be an experiment video. It started with my own tweet. I tweeted a few days ago that I don't really like in the Laravel Breeze or same in Laravel Jetstream that in the scaffolding blades you immediately have X something. So X layout, X card, X slot and X everything, which is blade components. And my argument was that it's not that readable. Instead, you could be having HTML like this on the left-hand side in Laravel UI. You immediately see the HTML and it's immediately clear what's inside. So that was my tweet and more than 300 people liked it. But also, I've got quite a lot of counter-arguments to that tweet, including from Taylor himself. So he just replied with DRY, so don't repeat yourself. And then it became quite a strong discussion between me and Taylor and people on both sides basically defending that blade components is the way to go to not repeat HTML code and they've been around for quite a while so they're not new and it's basically me who is late to the scene so to speak and I just need to adapt, need to read the documentation and admit that Laravel blade components are okay to use and they are convenient. So I decided to convince myself. In this video you will see two demo projects. First Laravel project is Laravel Breeze but without components. I've tried to reverse engineer what would Laravel Breeze look like or Laravel Jetstream, it's pretty similar structure, without those components. And then on the other side, my beloved Laravel UI on Bootstrap, what would happen if we add components to that? Would they be useful or not? Let's try it out. So the first experiment is Laravel Breeze. It's quite a new scaffolding by Taylor Otwell. It's still in early days, version 0. Point something. And I have a separate video about it. I will link that in the description of this video. But basically it's a scaffolding mechanism to have login and register form and empty dashboard. For example, you can register and get inside. But if we look at the blade of that project, there are blade files like login and register you immediately see x slot and x something. And I decided to try to take away those components and use same old blade logic. So step by step I try to take away the components and replace with old blade structure. And I will show you github commits, this repository is public, and step number one would be guest layout into blade extends. So that guest layout, if we open that as a component, layouts guest, it's really similar to extends and sections. So instead of having slot here, let's take a look at the commit. Instead of X guest layout, we have extends the layouts guest. And instead of slot, we have section. That's it. And we change that in all files. And the actual file is changing just slot to yield. So that it's all there is. So layout blade components is basically the same as extends and sections. So nothing really fancy here. So this is how our login blade looks now, without layout. Next is auth card. What is auth card? If we open auth card blade, it's basically a logo and then HTML code inside of the slot. And that logo is actually, if we go to login, is here x slot logo. So what I did here, I've put everything here into layouts guest. If we take a look at the commit, so scroll down, this is layouts guest. So you can ignore the formatting, but what I've done here is added the logo and the content wrapper in the layout itself. So there's no auth card. And auth card is actually visually, it's if we log out, login has auth card here and auth card consists of logo and login form. If we take a look at register, it's the same logo and login form. So login form would be actually the content of the layout. And logo is a static thing, there's no dynamic variables here. So this was my change in every file, then we don't need application logo and auth card at all, it was removed in all the files. It's not really visible well visually because it's also formatted code, but basically I've removed everything related to X auth card from all the pages. Next I've noticed two blade components which are really similar auth session status and auth validation errors. And it is basically the same as it would be include in blade without any blade components. So that was exactly the change I've made. Instead of x auth validation, I've created a partial file validation errors. And inside of that partial file, 
we have the same validation errors as we did before and pretty similar to auth session status also include. So some of the blade components are just includes. And up until this point, I successfully changed the blade components into non-blade component structure. So layouts, includes, partials, and some static HTML. But then it got more interesting. So when I started to look at the deeper components, which is X label, X input, also X button down below, those are much harder to change to be non-components and they make total perfect sense to be blade components. Let's take a look. If we take a look at X button, which is components button blade, inside of that there is a button, HTML tag, and there are a lot of attributes. So type submit by default, unless you override that. And then there's a class attribute with a huge list of classes by Tailwind CSS. And that is one of the serious reasons to componentize that. So you have one button and then in HTML, you only have X button and class you can override if you want, but that is also optional. If we take a look, for example, in all that folder, find in path X button, some of them are just X button without overriding anything. In fact, majority uh, in register blade is just X button. So only in login blade, it adds overriding one class. So if we didn't have the button as blade component, then we would need to repeat all of those CSS classes here in every page, in every button. And for example, if you want to change some styling of a button, then you only need to change that in the component. For example, px3 instead of px4 or something like that. So this is where blade components started making total sense. Similar if we take a look at, for example, x label, label blade also has a set of classes and you may override some of them. There's also parameter value, which then comes here. So actual blade files calls the components and pass the values, but all the logic is inside. So for example, x input, input blade is just a simple input, but with quite a few parameters. So disabled or not, then long class, and then you can add more attributes. So in this case, we're adding ID, type password, name password, autocomplete. So blade components are just the default values for default input. And then you add your own attributes on top. And then browsing through the project, I found more examples which show that components make sense. For example, in Navigation Blade. So if you log in or register, for example, and inside of the dashboard, you have the navigation, so dashboard, and also top right navigation. If we take a look at the code of that navigation, it makes it easier to add more links. So drop down link to log out. But what if we copy that and paste here? For example, settings, refresh, and there we go, we have a setting. Of course, the link is incorrect, but we can easily copy and paste the drop down links without really knowing what's inside. So at first, my logic looking at X slots and X something, my negative emotions was about that it's hidden, that the logic is hidden from being readable. But in fact, it's a good thing. You see only the things that you need to see. And if you want to take a look inside, you go to the components. Similar with left hand side. So X nav link is navigation link for the dashboard. For example, users or something or profile, we save. And on the left, we have another menu item. And also I see active request is dashboard. We see users and now it's not active anymore. So it's easy to read. It's active when the route is users. So overall, my conclusion looking at Laravel Breeze is that it totally makes sense to have blade components for things like inputs, like buttons and labels, and all of the other layout components that I've changed previously. I'm still 50-50 on whether it makes sense to have them as components, but if you have all the layout as components, then it makes it easier to read. You have one structure, you have everything componentized. And then you know where to find the hidden logic, which is resources, views, components. Now let's take a look at the opposite scenario. Let's take Laravel UI and let's add components. So this is default Laravel UI. Login form, register form. And if we take a look at the code, resources, views, auth, blade files, no blade components at all. Just plain HTML based on bootstrap. And similar to Laravel Breeze, let's think what we could componentize. Here's the commit. 
the repository will be also in the description of this video. So instead of container, I've had xauth card with header and card body. So here's the new login blade, auth card with the title. So visually, this will be the title, login or register. So the header, slot with the header, and then everything else below. An auth card becomes a component, auth card, because this part is actually repeating in all the pages. So container, justify, md8, card header, card body. All over the blade, if you can see, this is repeating. Email blade. On top, this is repeating, so why don't we have it as a component? And then if we want to change that, we will change it in one place. So for example, in auth card, I've replaced it for all pages, but visually nothing really changed. But if we want to change, for example, call MD6 instead of call MD8 for auth card, we change it in the component and then all the design changes in login, in register, everywhere. So this is where the power of components is visible. If you see the repeating parts, it makes sense to extract it into a component. So auth card was the first component for Laravel UI. Then to make it in the same style, I've replaced extends and section into X layout. It's not really necessary, but if we are going for components, let's go all in and we have X layout now. And that layout blade is here. So all the main design is actually now a component with a slot. And the next phase was the inputs, so input text and input checkbox and buttons, so things which makes the most sense to have it componentized. So I've created, if we take a look at login blade, instead of div, form, group and all of that block, now we have input group. This is for the email, this is for the password and this is for the checkbox. So input group and checkbox group. Inside of those groups, so component input group has the label the input and the validation error. And this is another component. Input validation error is this. So if there is an error, we show a span with a message. And that field name is a variable. In input group, there's also field name as a variable, field value may be present as a variable, and there's also field label with translations here. So visually, nothing really changed. We can refresh the login or the register it didn't change anything visually, but the actual blade files for login blade and for register blade, you could say they are more readable. So we have input group and all the logic what's input group is inside of the blade component. And final step was the submit group. So submit button, it repeats itself in the register, in the login, in the forgot password here. It's really similar. So I've extracted that to submit group which is this. By default, that button is call MD6 and offset MD4, but in one case of login, we override call MD6 into call MD8 and also have a slot for the link for forgot your password. So it's not as straightforward and the X submit button doesn't look really short in the blade. In this case, it's longer, but for register, for example, blade, it's really short. So by default, we just pass the label for the button, but if we need the link or some more parameters, it may look a bit longer. And maybe we can optimize that even more, so I just spent an hour playing around, so probably those components may be with more attributes or different attributes, and maybe it could be even more readable. But overall, after changing Laravel UI into components, now I'm quite convinced that if you use components all over your project and you have the structure of those components, the actual blade files become then shorter and perhaps more readable. Of course, it depends on how you name your components and name your parameters. So it's not HTML in the sense that I've used in the initial tweet. So it's not the HTML of div class something, but it's still pretty readable and moves the logic of the component into the separate layer of blade components. So all in all, I'm totally convinced by Taylor's DRY principle that don't repeat yourself and the repeating HTML code could be or should be extracted to components. I'm not entirely convinced by layouts as blade components, but I guess they make full picture of everything is a component and then you read the blade code just as components after components. What do you think? Do you use blade components yourself? 
and if you don't, why? And if you don't, will you start after this video? I will link everything in the description of this video, the tweets, so please read the discussion, pros and cons, both repositories for Laravel Breeze and Laravel UI, and let's discuss in the comments of this video everything you wanted to know about Blade Components. Also, I will link in the description the official documentation for Blade Components, how they work, what are the attributes and slots and all of that, so you can dig deeper into that. And if you want more tips on Laravel from this channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified of new videos, I'm shooting them almost daily now. Also tell your friends to subscribe and see you guys in other videos.